one of the things, places we've seen a, a, a big pickup, a big run-up in prices is in WTI, crude oil prices back, and back in a big way, back above $60 a barrel, in fact, well above that even at some points, too. And, and that's been a big deal for, for the big oil companies as well. Um, we've seen their stock prices come back as a result of all of that. ExxonMobil still is dealing with a pretty big deal today, though, with the proxy battle, Tom. And... Um, you know, this is going to be interesting. This comes down to the wire. It's not too often that you see such a close proxy battle, particularly with an activist investor who has such a small portion of the vote. Um, they were able to get the attention of some big shareholders, and, and I guess we'll wait and see what happens. Last time you were with us, you talked about what you saw at Exxon. We had Darren Woods on, I guess maybe it was a couple of times ago when you were on, um, and, and talked with him about the prospects he is facing and, and the change in, in consumer mentality at this point. Yeah, before I was at the New York Stock Exchange, I managed energy futures markets. And if I learned one thing, it's that, you know, oil goes up, oil goes down. And all of a sudden, that's become the conversation around Exxon. Like, oh, look at the oil prices. Maybe Exxon should stick to uh, fossil fuels. That, that, to me, is not the argument. This isn't, this isn't even a debate about climate change. This isn't a debate about Exxon's impact on the climate. To me, this is a debate about maximizing shareholder value. And the markets are speaking. You know, I sit on a university board. I showed up to a meeting last year, and they said, we're no longer going to invest in any company that has anything to do with fossil fuels. That was it. They stopped, in, they stopped investing. And you're going to see increasing regulation. You're going to see more and more laws uh, that are kind of hurting fossil fuels companies. And that is what it is. So no matter, no matter the role of fossil fuels in the economy over the next two decades, in order to maximize shareholder value, you're going to have to diversify away. I haven't, I haven't talked to Darren other than on air uh, in a couple of years, but, you know, if I was sitting having a beer with him, I would say, you, you, you need a Marshall Plan here. You have to really jump into new renewable sources. I, I, I understand that you're a petroleum company, a molecules company, but things like solar, wind, water, battery storage, that you're, gonna, you're just going to get a higher multiple. It's that simple. So if you invest in those businesses now, you generate cash flow later, you're going to get a higher multiple on a dollar from renewables than you are a dollar from fossil fuels. It's, it's, not a moral, it's not a moral debate. I, I, I don't know exactly what's going to happen today. I suspect Exxon will win uh, the vote because they have such a diffuse shareholding. They have so many retail shareholders, and it's hard to win a, a proxy fight if you're an activist when you have to cajole lots and lots of retail. So I suspect they will win, but they might win this battle and lose the war if they don't use this whole tailwind as impetus to, to kind of move. And I know Darren's a petroleum engineer. I, mean, I think and he they're came already, through, I think yeah, they're already doing that. Yeah, a little I mean, bit. I, I think mean, they're doing we... that with some of their plans for carbon capture. A little um, bit. They're, dip, they're, you know, they're dipping I, I their I think they're turning in. to that. But you're, you're not going to turn this company into a non-oil company. I mean, this is going to be a, an oil company that's there. They could have other streams of revenue that come online. But the college that you talked about, the university you sat on the board of, is not going to be investing in this company because they're, they're not going to get 100 percent away from, uh, from what they are. Actually, I, I, I'm not sure I totally agree with you, Becky. I think that universities, pensions, endowments are going to look, and they're going to differentiate over time, between companies that are principally almost solely engaged in fossil fuels and those who are large fossil fuels companies, but they're taking a goodly portion of their cash flow, a real substantive portion of their cash flow, not like the dipping the toe in the water that Exxon has done, and they're investing in these sources of renewables. Because, look, Exxon can make a difference in the, in the move to renewables, and university endowments and pensions are going to realize that it's better to incent good acting, uh, you know, good acting a, according to their definition, uh, as opposed to just staying away entirely. So who do you think is doing it right when it comes to big oil? Any of them? What, what, what do you mean? In, 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 you're talking about investment firms? No, when any of the big who, oil companies. I, not, not really. I mean, you know, it's like if you look at uh, uh, the, the targets that Darren has talked about, it puts them in, it puts them in league with Chevron. Uh, but, but no, none of them, I, 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 at least not none of the big guys that are coming to mind right now, BP, Chevron, Exxon, I think there's an opening uh, to see a very, very big commitment in, in the direction of renewables. And I just think they should look at, the, look at the multiples and forget about the stock price. Forget about the fact that Exxon was down 40 percent. They've regained most of that. Uh, the, stock, the stock's always going to go up. It's going to go down. But the uh, cash flow multiple on Exxon has just declined steadily over the last decade. That is the market speaking. So if you want to maximize shareholder values and you're in the corner office, you look at that and say, well, what can we do to get a bigger multiple? And I think the, I think the answer is obvious but hard. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.